Here, we're gonna take a little bit of time to explain Poisson regression when working with count data. So you'll remember that we talked about count data is where we're looking at the number of times the event occurred, and all the individuals in our study have been followed for the same amount of time. Right? So we don't need to worry about the rate, the um, follow-up time for everyone, it's, it's the same for everyone. So the first thing to note with just count um, or rate data, but here we're talking specifically about count data, is that quite often as the count or the rate increases, so here we're looking at y, the number of occurrences, versus x, just some numeric variable, as that increases, right, as the expected number of occurrences gets higher, the variability tends to increase. So we see a lot more variability up here for a high expected number of occurrences than down here for low expected number of occurrences. And if you remember, when talking about the Poisson distribution, we saw there a feature it has is that the mean is equal to the variance. Right? Or that the standard deviation is the square root of the mean. So this is a feature that often happens in count data. As we expect an event to occur, uh, to occur more often, the variability from that gets larger. Let's take a moment just to um, explain conceptually why that seems to make sense. Okay, the Poisson has it built in that the mean is exactly the same as the variance, which may or may not be true. In the next week's lectures, we'll look at how we can check that and how we can address it if that is not met. But what I want to do is, is go over um, kind of a conceptual explanation of why it makes sense that as the mean gets larger, variability or standard deviation would get larger when working with count data. Now suppose we're looking at some outcome, the number of people who show up to the ER um, in an hour, or let's just say in a day. Okay? Let's suppose we're looking at a small hospital where on average 10 people show up per day. Okay? What's going to happen on a quiet day? We might see only one or two or three. What's going to happen on a busy day? If on average 10 show up, we might see 20, 25 or so. I'm making up numbers here, but trying to make the point. If on average 10 come, you know, we might go down to zero, we might go as high as 25 or so. Most of the time we'll be in that range. Now, let's imagine a mega hospital with a much bigger um, rate, right? much higher rate. Let's think of some hospital that on average has 200 people showing up per day to the ER. What's gonna happen on a quiet day? We might only get 50 or 60 or 80 or so. On average, if 200 are coming, what's gonna happen on a busy day? We might see 400, 500, something like that. And what I'm trying to show is with that higher um, mean, right, of 200, we'd get much further from that. Right? The numbers I made up, if on average 200, we might go as low as 50, as high as 500, right? You can see that's a pretty wide range. If on average 10 people show up, we might go as low as zero, we're only 10 below the expected, or 25, only 15 above. And so what I'm trying to just do is give you some intuition as to why it makes sense in general that as the count increases, right, or as the expected number of events occurring increases, variability is gonna increase as well. It doesn't necessarily have to be the mean and the variance exactly equal, right? That's a theoretical probability distribution where we, um, well, I shouldn't say we, um, someone else built that feature into it. But hopefully it makes sense to you conceptually that as the expected number of occurrences goes up, variability is gonna go up as well when working with count or rate data. So we tend to see something like this. Um, also, one feature that tends to happen, as X increases, y tends to increase exponentially. Okay, so there's this sort of exponential um, or multiplicative association um, that tends to happen. So if we want to think about how we can model this, um, I'm going to move a bit more quickly through this because what we're going to see is very similar to what we saw in linear regression and logistic regression and so on. Here we can model y, carry the count, or the number of occurrences, I'm just writing the same thing in multiple ways, as an exponential function of the x variables that we have. All right, so you can see essentially what this is doing is it's gonna fit 
an exponential shape curve to that. If you remember, this is going to always have to be greater or equal to zero right, by exponentiating it, which fits well with modeling the number of occurrences. It's always going to have to be zero or more. And now what I want to think about is what can we do to try and get this to be um, linear? Maybe I'll, I'll draw the plot first and then I'll write the model. You can uh, probably see where I'm going to be going with this. But here's x. What if we take the log of y? Right? The log number of occurrences. So maybe let me write that over here before I draw in the plot. If we take the log of y, or the log count, or the log number of occurrences, that's going to be b0 plus b1x1 all the way up to bk, xk. Right, so taking the log of the outcome links us to a linear function. Right, again, this is the generalization or the generalized linear model. Right. Rather than working with the number of occurrences, if we use the log number of occurrences, that links us to a linear function. So again, <clears throat> a few things I want to point out before I move on. In some sense, it's going to look very similar to the foundation we built in linear regression. Right, we've got the linear term here. In some sense, it's also going to look very similar to what we learned in logistic regression. And that on this side, we're working with the log. Right there, we're working with log odds. Here, we're working with the log rate. Now, let's think about what we learned about um, logs when we were talking about transformations in linear regression. Right? If we have something that's looking sort of exponential, if we take the log of y, what it tends to do is take the small values and stretch out the space between them and take the larger values and squish those in. Right? We saw that when, um, in the first week or two of the course when talking about um, transformations, when there's non-linearities or when there's non-constant variance. We also um, saw properties of logs and exponents scattered throughout a few different weeks where we just look at um, how can we make a plot like this look linear when we work with the log. So what this is essentially gonna do is transform the data to look a lot more like this. So when we're taking the log of y, first it's going to take, if this is exponential, it's going to become, uh, that's not the straightest line, but uh, it's going to become a, a straight line, right, or a line on the scale of log y. And we've also seen that if there's increasing variability in y, right, Taking the log of y is uh, one solution that will often fix that. It won't always fix that. So this is the Poisson regression model, kind of in a, a quick snapshot. We're going to model the number of times the event occurs as an exponential function of the x variables. Or we can think of it as we're modeling the log number of times the event occurred as a linear function of the x's. And this is all for count data where all the individuals have been followed for the exact same amount of time. What we're going to do now is I'm going to talk a little bit about the assumptions for Poisson regression, whether it's count data or rate data. And we're also going to move into talking about how do we fit the Poisson regression model when we have rate data? Right? How do we account for the fact that people have different follow-up times? Stick around, guys. There's more to see, and please stay safe.